Hey, it's Dave Wyman from Bob, Dave, and more. Time for Football 101. And uh, I like looking at the stats at the end of the regular season and always try to figure out which ones are the most indicative of uh, getting into the playoffs. So did a little uh, color-coded chart here. It was really obnoxious. It took forever. So sorry to Taylor Jacobs waiting for me. But um, let's take a look at just... It, they go from, from left to right here as far as importance. And so if you look at pass offense and how this works is this is top 10 teams that made the playoffs. So all these teams up here are in the playoffs and this is where they ranked during the season in these different categories. So pass offense, Kansas City was number five, New Orleans seven, New England eight. So just three uh, playoff teams in, in the top 10. So not that indicative of how you get in the playoffs. And this is about how you get to the playoffs, not necessarily you're gonna win in the playoffs. So once you get in the playoffs, it's wide open. Sacks, also not as indicative, and this is <laughs> good news for the Seahawks. They don't show up in either of these, but uh, New Orleans, Minnesota, San Francisco, and New England were all in the top 10 in sacks. So only four teams that made the playoffs. Total yards, thought this was kind of interesting. Seahawks in there for offense, their number eight offense, but total yards, you only got five on both offense and defense. So this is total yards gained and given up. And you see New England, San Francisco, San Francisco probably as far as yards go, the toughest team here because they're number four in offense and number two in defense. And Seahawks found that out the other night, but Seattle there at number eight, but only five teams uh, made the playoffs in each of these categories that were in the top 10. Next, and these are the two ones that every year they show up a little bit less this year. I believe it was eight teams that were in the top 10 that made the playoffs and seven this year, Baltimore, San Francisco, of course, Seattle showing up at number four, which bodes well for them. And now the granddaddy of them all, the turnover ratio. Turnover ratio is just um, every year, it, uh, it makes a huge difference. That's New England, forgot to put the red in there. But nine teams that were in the top 10, the only outlier at number eight was Pittsburgh. You know, and they, they were a positive turnover ratio, but Seahawks um, at number four there. And what I look at, you know, and I think the Seahawks are, are number, 12, I'm sorry, they're plus 12. So that just means 12 more possessions that you get during the season. And, and also not giving them up, of course, matters as well. But, you know, this is always the, the, the best, most indicative stat is turnover ratio. And nine of the top 10 teams in the NFL this year in turnover ratio made the playoffs. Let's take a look at uh, one play. This is the first play of the second half from the game Sunday night against San Francisco. And the 49ers go with good old fashioned 21 personnel a lot, which they have a fullback in Kyle Juszczyk, number 44. And uh, this guy, they use him, he had one catch for 50 yards and then he just does a lot of blocking. But two running backs is the two, one is the number of tight ends. So, and this is George Kittle, of course. What they tried to do on this play is just run like an ISO on the outside, on the edge. And this was really important. And this is Michael Kendricks out here. He's injured. So he's not gonna be in the playoffs and Cody Barton's gonna to have to play this position. But Cody Barton, I think is actually better at playing the pass than Michael Kendricks. And did this a couple of weeks ago on Football 101, showed that he could have had a couple of interceptions because of the way he played the pass. But when he played against the Rams earlier, one of the things that he did is taking on blocks, he got a little bit too much down the middle of the blocker. But what happened here is that uh, Kittle blocks down here and then tries to go get to Bobby, but Bobby ends up getting past him. The guy who ends up getting credit for the tackle is Clowney. He comes off the backside. Nobody blocks him. I don't think that they thought his speed would, would be able to get there. But they ran an ISO here and gave the ball right here. And what Kendricks did is he came up and he took this play on with the inside part of his body. He got underneath him, first of all, but then he kept his outside arm and leg free. So if, if I'm him in this situation, he took the block on here and kept his outside free. And one of the things that Cody Barton has done in those situations is just get right down the middle of the guy. And, and that's great and everything, but you gotta keep that outside arm free. And so he stuffed him right here and then was able to, I call it feather, where you know, you're able to, if you need to, you can disengage with that block and head to the outside if he starts to cut it outside. But he kept it inside and actually what happened was he tripped here and then Clowney touches him. But the way he took that on is the way that Cody Barton's gonna have to do that going forward if they're gonna be in base personnel 
and Cody, a good rookie, great against the pass, but I thought this play right here also was indicative of how you have to be physical against a team like the 49ers. And he came up and punched the, the fullback in the mouth there, as I like to say, and got a minus uh, yard gain. I think it was a one yard loss on this play. And that set the Seahawks off on a, a second half sort of rally there that almost got them the win.